Man, this is lifestyles of the poor and unfucking fortunate. But I tell you what, but 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 bitch, we got views. Chat Arms TV, man, we're back and we are happy to bring you this interview. This one has been in the works for a few weeks now, but our schedules have both been busy, so we're finally getting able to, being able to link up. And um, from Portland, Tennessee, we got Marcotic. Yeah, what's going on, y'all, man? It's Marcotic six one five mobile home rich checking in we got the interview with chad arms y'all are in mobile home rich the mobile home that we take torn right now mm -hmm. so y'all get to see that man so yeah. we're just out here working for sure man we uh we're gonna just kind of do like we do like we do most of these man we're gonna kind of start with uh we'll start with this man what the, are you originally from where we're at now portland yeah well Born i'm raised, from uh, i'm from franklin kentucky portland tennessee so like, we could throw a baseball to Franklin, Kentucky from where we're, where we're at. Right. It's the line. So, I was back and forth my whole life, like, between Franklin, Kentucky and Portland, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so it's a little bit of both. I just always, you know, cling to to uh, Tennessee, and that's what I ended up, you know, always <laughs> repping. And, you know, I ended up working in Nashville for years and being in Nashville a lot and stuff like that. So, I just, you know, I still rep Kentucky, but... You see 615 on the stuff, too, because, like I said, I'm, I'm in between, man. I'm on the state line. Yeah, you were so, we right here. We right here on yeah. the Kentucky line for sure. What was like? What was it like growing up? And Was it like mainly like country, like you was living, You lived in the country the majority of like childhood? Uh, Well, like early childhood, yeah, it was mainly majority. I lived in a trailer out in the country, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, I lived in a trailer my whole life. And, uh, you know, then later on, like my parents had got divorced, and, uh, my mom ended up moving to like Harristown and in Franklin, if anybody knows where that is, and then uh, to like different parts of Portland, and just moved around after that. But you know, my, I always had that play that trailer out in Kentucky. You know what I'm saying in the country. So yeah, but that's dope, man. So like yeah. growing up, what was it? What was it like growing up? Like, did you did you get into sports a lot, or was you in and out of? Did you get into music early, early on, or? Yeah, man, I got into music early on, actually, because uh, I was like five, six years old, something like that, maybe even younger, like four, and uh, I was rapping at, at that young of an age, because my cousins, like, always wanted me to rap, like, songs on the radio, and I was allowed to cuss, so mm -hmm. i just walk around, you know, cussing, at, like a little four or five-year-old kid, cussing, singing yeah. songs on the radio, cousins thought it was funny. Yeah. So, uh. Yeah, and then I just kept doing it so after you did, that. So. You did it mainly just because your cousins were basically, you were doing it already, and people, and cousins were just like wanting you to do it Yeah. to, for, to make them laugh and stuff. Yeah, probably. like yeah. as a joke, like a little kid walking around singing, cussing, saying, you know, whatever yeah. from off a radio song, a little four or five, six-year-old kid doing that. And, uh, yeah, thought it, it was funny. Yeah. You know, what was what was the like the the stuff you was listening to back then when you first started listening to rap music? Do you remember what was it like Eminem? Was it was it? I, actually, man, back then it was uh, it was a, like a lot of stuff on the radio, like Pete Pablo. Mm -hmm. and they listened to a lot of Haystack songs and mm -hmm. stuff like it was big Haystack era back then. Yeah, and Eminem, of course, stuff like that. Yeah. Chingy, oh, yeah, shit, early two like, thousands. Like yep, 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 stuff like that. So. So when did you when did it become something where as you was getting older going through school and stuff did you start freestyling or did you start writing or uh, when did that kind of that ball start rolling Man when I was like 8 years old mm -hmm. on career day uh <laughs> I dressed up in baby blue starter outfits and I went to school and told everybody I wanted to be a rapper yeah. like I really did that like back when the, the I had all the fucking the whole track suit yep. and everything and I had a fucking fake ass ICP chain, yep. <laughs> like a big one. Went to school, told yep. him I want to be a rapper, and you know, that's crazy to look back because somebody who actually ended up getting their foot in the door of being a rapper, mm -hmm. you know, that's making a, a living of right now, an actual living doing it. Mm -hmm. That uh, that's crazy to see that. But so I and I think maybe I quit messing with it for a while, like in the younger years. But definitely during high school, I started writing songs and probably around 16 or so started making songs again, like ones that I hope nobody ever finds, <laughs> you yeah. know, shit like that, like recording on a laptop and shit like, you know, with a USB mic or something. Yeah. But uh, I started freestyling and yeah, I just never really quit after that. So I kind of kept doing it. And... 
What do you remember your earliest? Do you remember the earliest, like, song, like as far as songs that you would have done back then? Was it like, like how old were you when you remember recording in a studio? Like, maybe not so much just a computer with a USB yeah. mic, but like when you started feeling it getting, this might be something I could really am going to try to pursue and, and do, and it's becoming real. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, question first time I was ever in a real studio was. Uh, Young Bama from Bowling Green, Kentucky. I was in his studio when I was, I think I was still underage at the time. Mm -hmm. I did some old songs called, one was called Always. I did an old uh, mixtape back mm -hmm. then. And I yeah. recorded a lot there when he had his studio in Bowling Green. And when I first recorded, it was still in his house, but I mean, it was a, in a closet, but it was a real yeah. studio no, back sure. then, you know. Yeah. It was the first time seeing a real mic in an Avalon or a Newman mic, shit like that, you know what I mean? And, uh, so, yeah, but after that, you know, I just, uh, I kept doing it for a while in my early teens. Yeah. I was really doing it. The first, like, big show I ever went to when I was 18 was with Lil White. And uh, I did a song with Lil White when I was 18. And we went to Vegas or landed in landed in Arizona and ended up going to Vegas. But, uh, so we did that. And the reason I did that is just because that was, like, growing up, one of my, like idols that we always listen to that all yeah. everybody that's a name i forgot to mention earlier when we was talking about that little white songs <laughs> no, so i was sure. a kid singing little white yeah. songs too but uh <clears throat> so yeah man I, I mean i took it serious for a while then and like you know i had stuff happen in, in my life had kids and honestly kind of fell off doing it for a little while probably from 2017 to 2020 so for a few years i didn't do anything but it, all up until then from high school to then i was steadily that's all i was doing you know yeah. i ended up i never i was just wasn't doing it the right way back then you know mm -hmm. it really didn't take off till i started doing the right things with the right people and you know having the right production and and doing everything correct you know yeah well and two where you're from this area like there's probably not a lot of similar to like where i live where i'm from is there's not a lot of rap artists in the area. Yeah. Probably yeah. at that time, at least. Yeah, there really wasn't back then. There wasn't hardly. I mean, there were like some friends I went to school with that were rapping and uh, stuff like that. But there, there was, there definitely wasn't nobody ever from where I'm from to like do what I've done or you know what I mean, like stuff like that. Yeah. You know, there never was anybody that was like or mainstream or anybody like big. Mm -hmm. just, we never had anybody like that. Yeah. But, uh, so the first, would you say going back to like, what, like we're getting ahead now to where we're talking about like, um, streaming platforms and stuff. I know you released mixtapes and stuff like that Yeah. prior to, but was the song white boy with stack? Was that the first one you put out as far as, um, it says 2017 when I is the earliest one on here. No, the, yeah, that's the earliest one still out. Cause like I said, you know, like it took me. I was young, and it, it took me years to, like, the sound that I got now and the sound that I've built. I mean, even on there in the early years, you can tell it's changed from the end to my new album yeah. and from my album that's about to come out. You tell a huge difference. It took me a long time to develop my sound, and I, you know, I went to college also for audio engineering, so oh, I dope. tried okay. to produce my own shit for a while, and yeah. uh, it wasn't always right back then. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It it. It wasn't always right. Yeah. So I took a lot down. You know, I tried to only leave up. Because to me, I wanted when somebody to come to my page and only hear like my best or something that I was right. wanted them to hear. Yeah. Because if you leave up all your old music that really wasn't worth a damn to me at the time, I mean, it might have been, but like compared to finding my sound and who I am now, like I, I don't like that old music no more. So I took it down and yeah. kind of restarted, which you see a lot of artists have done that, you know. Yeah, over and, the time and and i get that too because if somebody was to come across one of your older songs and it was their first introduction to you yeah, it could kick it them make, out yeah right so that makes sense bro especially if it's something yeah. that you're not a fan of it makes sense that way but you did that in 2017 and then uh you said from 2017 to 2020 you kind of just you you did this you did sticks yeah you did that one too yeah that was one I randomly see I was working construction in Nashville I used to work for I I did fire sprinklers for a living for a while yeah so I you know I was waking up every morning putting my boots on going to work coming back home at dark you know doing fire sprinklers which is anybody knows anything about you know 
a pipe fitter in construction, that's some that's some tough shit to do. You know, yeah. pipe fitters got a tough ass job. So yeah. I didn't do a lot back then. I given up. And actually, it's a good time for me to tell this story. So what really happened too is I'd met a guy named Fan Mob Deasy is his name who does some music with me. Mm-hmm. And you might have seen some songs I had with him or that he put out with me on them. Yeah. Uh, Man, I had met that guy, and he's a really good rapper, and uh, I was recording at the time. And um, anyways, I, I was just recording, and so I was just going to record him. I wasn't going to rap. One day I did a song with him, and he's just like, look, man, he's like, he's like, man, you're one of the hardest rappers like out here. You can rap. He's like, man, you need to get back into it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And that's what got me back into it to be honest that's what made me start like to be like well you know i guess we'll give it another go because you know honestly the first time you know i spent a long time doing all the shows i spent a while not getting anywhere you know doing oh, the wrong sure. things and yeah. and not doing stuff right and i just wasn't ready yeah. you know and um so yeah he got me back into it so shout out to him and uh man his brother had recently passed away too so that was his blood brother so you know long live big a that was uh, a member of our team that, you know, went everywhere with us, you know, for the shows and stuff, went with us to the Redneck Raves and just all that stuff. So he just yeah. recently passed away. So, you know, prayers to his family and oh, friends. That's their you know brothers. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're see, blood you, brothers. You, you so. was telling me about, yeah, about, about, it. about him off camera. Yeah. Rest in peace to him, man. That's terrible. Yeah. Um, so going as far as back as your music, when you took the break in 2020, we could kind of get into that because everybody knows 2020 was when pandemic hit. Yeah. So how did that, how did that happening affect you personally? Was you working? Was you still doing the man? My, when, when the pandemic hit, they didn't shut me down. Like okay, I so still had still, to work. Yeah. yeah. I still had to go to work. They didn't make us sit nowhere for no time. You know what I mean? So yeah. I was at that time I was testing fire hydrants for Metro, like four different company through Metro, but I was going around flowing fire hydrants at that time in Nashville, the whole COVID. Still you probably had to worry about traffic, huh? <laughs> no, it, yeah, it's it was crazy. Bad. It's yeah. crazy in COVID. If, you, if you're in Nashville all the time, man, to see, like, see Nashville in COVID, it's like, what the hell? Yeah. Like, you get to work in 30 minutes versus an hour, and you're like, this mm-hmm. ain't right, something's wrong. Yeah, you know? it's like, yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy. To see that. Um, but right towards the beginning of that time frame, you've dropped Biggest Lie in 2020. Yeah. Is that kind of when, was that kind of what you got, what got you back doing Dropping songs around that time. Yeah, that really that probably was the first one that really kick started it back. There's also another album missing out of that time that was took down. That oh, was you it? don't okay. see that uh you know, that had been took off that uh man, shout out to Dub Thirty Thirty. Um he's the one who mixes and masters all my stuff and Same uh here, bro. That's my, that's my one, family right one there. One thing I did was go delete any just about except some of that old stuff. I went and deleted anything he didn't do. Be honest with you, like yeah, anything man. Dub didn't do, got took down because you know Dub, I have you sounding as your best self. You know, for like, sure. Yeah. Like he have your, your stuff sounding right. When I found him and heard his production, I was like, man, it just. I didn't want him to hear me another way. You know what I mean? I didn't no, want to hear sure. the old way, so I left up some, a few things. Yeah. But uh, that's who still does all my stuff now, and the new album coming out, he did the whole thing. So. He produced it. He well, he produced a lot of it beat wise, but mix yeah. yeah. Even even if I get a beat from somewhere else, I still send him the stems because, you know, he he'll spice the beat up. He'll he'll take a beat, you send him stems and make it sound amazing. You know, for sure, man. That's that's definitely who we who we go to for mixing and mastering for sure. Um, and then you dropped sheet metal made. Was that uh that was, yeah, in twenty twenty April twenty twenty. Yeah, that was an older one. Did you? And then it was basically you was kind of just back to trying to, I guess, get back into the music, but kind of try to build build a buzz back. Cause you did you have a pretty good one before you stopped, or was it kind of stagnant? There was a, a point where I had a little buzz kind of before I st- stopped, but uh, honestly, like I ended up going through some like a lot of personal problems, yeah, yeah, big personal issues. So I was gone for a while, you know, and it happened uh, to all of us, Bubba, for sure. Yeah. I was gone for, but I think during that time, you know, I had, uh, which I got two kids, so during that time, I had split up with their, their mom, mm-hmm. my dad had passed away, um, somewhere around there towards the end of that era, and, uh, and just a lot of different stuff, so, 
when I first came back, I was just dropping a few songs. I think, you know, once once I came up with Mobile Home Rich and realized what it was, that's when I really kick started back into it. You know, that's when I that's when I really got back into it. So, to be honest, since I came out with my new music and since I came out with Mobile Home Rich, everywhere I go, I pick up followers now. Like the the page is growing by the thousands weekly, and everybody who sees it just follows and like continues and. Man, now we got people tattooing Mobile Home Rich on their necks, uh, yeah. on their hands, all over. The, the same one I got, man, I tattooed my own trailer on my arm. It's my own trailer right there. And, uh, Mobile know. Home Rich, yeah. Pro Tools. Got a redneck rave tattoo right there. So shout, shout out, out to just, Justin yeah, Time, shout man. Shout out to Justin Time, for sure. That's yeah. I started doing the redneck rave. That's another thing that jumped a lot, too. Um after I did the song with Lil White, the Three Six Mafia tribute, I might be jumping ahead because I see you going through the albums through the time. No, you, we can do it however you want to do it. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm looking. So, uh, Mobile Home Records. I was just looking at that album. That's the first album. That's is that when you felt like things started to take a turn? Yeah, Mobile. When you dropped that album. Mobile Home Records is for sure when it started to because that had the F a record deal song on it. F a record deal is a song that when I go to a show, the crowd knows the, the words to now. Like that's mm -hmm. a song they like a whole lot, you know. And, uh, yeah, when I dropped that, Dub mixed and mastered all that. And uh, I think he did just about every beat on that as well. I think he produced all those beats, too. There might be a couple he didn't, but most of them he did. Yeah. Most he, yeah, most he produced on that, that album. And that was about a year after what the song we were talking about. This is May 1st, 2021, when he dropped that, that yeah, album. Yeah, yeah. See, there was an album in 2020 that's not up, but... Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so... And I remember, I remember too... Um, I may be tripping. Let me see. You see, dropped that's a country rap album. and southern trap the same time, correct? You see how they line up, though? That's yeah. fucking yeah, I luck. Saw, that's yeah. luck. <laughs> yeah. Pure luck how that happened. Oh, as far as the way that they look on there? Yeah. It yeah. went like that everywhere. Like, that was my plan. I didn't know if it was going to work. That shit worked. Yeah. It lines so it's basically up. giving you, you want to speak about the Southern Trap and Country Rap, like, uh, Well, one's a country, albums. yeah, one's a country rap album, one's a rap album. So yeah. one's straight hip-hop rap, and one's country rap with guitars, all guitar beats and country rap songs. Yeah. That's what it is, and, uh, so yeah, that's, that's what that one is. Uh, that's the last double album, that's the last album I put out. So yeah. I haven't released an album since then, I've been working on one ever since. Yeah, and this is uh, that's the one that had. I think that's dope how you did those too, like the two different styles. And Southern Trap is the one that's got the Three Six Mafia tribute with Lil White that went. Yeah, that viral did real good. On, yeah. yeah, on YouTube. And yeah, that's that's the one that's got that. And uh, yeah, that that song took off. We uploaded it and it just kept going and going. And uh, we went down there with Lil White on his birthday to shoot the video. So shout out to him for rocking with us and. Yeah. Uh, you know, we performed it a few times and, uh, you know, different things like that. And, uh, yeah, it, that opened up a lot of doors for me because it, it, you know, it boosted my numbers is what it did. It really boosted all my numbers. And so. So do you, yeah, so after the little white collab that, that did well, you started to see an, a substantial increase in uh -huh. following? Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Like, that's the first song I ever, like, that kicked all my YouTube numbers up. And, uh, you know, everybody hit me up about that song. And uh, that's how, when people see me a lot of times, they're like, oh, I seen you on the 3-6 Mafia tribute. You know, a lot of people see it like that or bring yeah. that up. Like, well, not so much as now as now as back then. You know, that's yeah. how a lot of, when I was first coming around, when people see me, that's how they would know me. It's from that song. Yeah. So, uh. Well, and see, Salute to Why, that's, that's fam, too. Like, he. Yeah. He um he's got some of the earliest earliest interviews on Chat Arms TV back in the day. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's that's dope that that's how that worked out. Yeah. Um, I'm then, gonna continue to work with him in the future too, man. So shout yeah. out to him. You know what I'm saying? I've I've done a lot of different stuff with him, and uh that was it's crazy to me too for like everybody to look at it. You know, being like from where we we're talking about me being where I'm from, growing up yeah. listening to Little White songs, to one day. You know, being on not being from Memphis either. Yeah. You know, to one day grow up and be able to be on, share a stage with them and do songs with them and and go to shows and stuff like that with them. You know, to be able to do that from growing up as a kid, not having any connection yeah. like that. You know, that's a crazy thing to you know. That shows people can you know do anything they try to do. 
you know what I'm saying? So yeah, and what's what's dope because how you relate to that, I can relate with him on the interview tip just because when White's album dropped, I was working at Media Play back in the day, and you couldn't tell me he wasn't the hardest rapper yeah. in the world, bro. When that when Doubt Me Now dropped, which is coming up on the 20 year anniversary, bro, I still listen yeah. to Doubt Me Now. Yeah, it's a class. It's, one of, the, it's one of my favorite rap albums, yeah. bro. Like. And it's just, it's dope. I see what you're saying. The same thing, I, you know, when he's been on the channel and telling stories that he's told and shit like that. But it's it's cool, man. Yeah. It's Luke to White. And about sure. those other two double albums, I'll tell you, too, what, like, inspired that is, uh, man, I was at, it's where I, I told you earlier, I don't know if it's on recording, but uh, where I came up with Mobile Home Rich from is I took, oh, I had Mobile Home Rich and Sheet Metal made. Um, I took both those shirts to a Jelly Roll show at a Mud Fest. Mm -hmm. And I put them up in this booth, and every, everybody wanted the Mobile Home Rich shirts and would ask about the Mobile Home Rich shirts or ask me what it was. And so once I realized that, that everybody thought how cool that was, not knowing who I was, that's when I was like, man, this is the brand, because I immediately realized how people were attracted to it. Mm -hmm. But after that show, man, I didn't have a lot of stuff out. I took a lot of my old stuff down, and uh, Jelly Row was always one of my like inspirations and favorite artists growing up, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. being from here... You know, we always seen his stuff growing up from yeah. back when he was starting. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so anyways, I, I seen him perform that night, and he just killed it. You know, there's oh, like yeah. 10, 20,000 people, something like that. It's a big-ass yeah. crowd. And I seen how he just killed the thing. So I was like, man, I got, I got to go home and make new music. Like, <laughs> I got to yeah. go because he had so many hits. I was like, man, that dude just went up there and played like 30 hit records. I was yeah, like, dude. man, I got to go back and make some new songs. So I went back home and made that double album, and I didn't do no shows until that double album came out. That's really what I did. I was like, That's dope. you know, and both of them's ten songs. You did it's twenty twenty songs total. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. I think that's what it is. But yeah, and you know, it splits my face in half, half on one side, half on the other. Country rap and a rap album, so it shows both sides. But yeah, yeah I was, and those ended up being my best two albums up till now. You know, where I really found. Like, there's a song on there called Lost Soul, and mm -hmm. uh, everybody loves that song, too, for some reason, on, on the uh, country rap album. Yeah. People really like that song, man. That's a that's a good song, a video. If you see the video, the uh, the video, man, when Bowling Green buys down here got hit by the hurricane, yeah. then it, or the tornado, not hurricane, the tornado, and it tore every the whole city down, uh, that's when we shot that video. So you see all the storm damage throughout the whole the lost oh, soul man. the lost soul music video yeah but so uh you was right you had the momentum from those two albums at the end of last year mm -hmm. and then this year early 2020 uh 22 you dropped in my razor was that the first one it's, it's showing the first one you dropped it from this year as far as you've dropped five or six singles this year yeah yeah but that seems like that's the first one that kind of which is uh that was a dope one too. Um, yeah, um, in my razor, that's the one that we we did the video at the South Carolina Redneck Rave, and uh, my friend that just passed away is in that video too that we were talking about in my razor. So mm -hmm. in the music video, yeah, that was done at the South Carolina Redneck Rave. Was that the first rave you went to? Yeah, it was. South Carolina Rave was the first rave I went to, and then I've been to South Carolina. I went to Indiana. I went to Kentucky twice. So, yeah, I've been to like four, four, five Redneck Rays, something like that. Yeah. Shout out to Justin, man. Uh, that's one person, too, like, just from working with him and being around like him. Like, that dude, like, you know, he's got it going on over there. Like, he, he understands the business, and mm -hmm. he's told me and taught me a bunch of different little things in business. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, uh, yeah, they got it going on down there, man. So, and I just... uh. Should I tattooed redneck rave shit on my arms just because, I man, I actually go riding and off-roading, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got yeah. razors and four-wheelers, and that's that's what I like to do, too. So, yeah. man, it's like a family out there, man. Uh, I, You know, I show up early to all the shows, and I ride around the whole time, and I ride up to fans that might be broke down in the woods, help them get out, and give them free Mobile Home Rich t-shirts, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So I, That's cool. Yeah, I'm really out there with the people and yeah. stuff like that, so... Was is mobile home rich as far like was that just a line you said in a song that turned into like what yeah. it is now pretty much yeah yeah it was it was uh I mean I'd always this whole time like since I started rapping I always 
rap like something to do with like my lifestyle, which was you know the trailer at the time, mm -hmm. or rapped about that. But when I found, yeah, I just I knew I needed a brand name. You know what I'm saying? Like I knew that every yeah. every big artist has some type of brand. A lot of them, mm -hmm. and I said it once and knew it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So That's I old. forget what song it was in, man, but. It was uh it it's was just kinda song. how it started though, just from it was just a line that you said yeah. and you're like, Man, that's kinda catchy. Maybe I Yeah. That's For usually sure. how a lot of that stuff happens, man. It just you know, it's not something that's really thought about too heavily. Yeah. It's just something that's usually it's a line or uh, something and then it just kinda turns into it gets like grows legs on its own, which is dope. The uh, tattoo part of it's crazy to me, man. Like seeing fans tat so many different people tattoo it and you know, tattoo the whole mobile home rich thing, man, that's amazing to me. And uh that's super cool. Yeah. Man. I got some pictures of it. I might be able to send you to throw in. Yeah, you can send it to them in there because that's I'm talking stuff. about singles. We'll throw those up each time too. Yeah. Um, ain't going broke till pigs fly with uh, Slum Prince. You dropped May twelfth. Yeah. Shout out, shout out to Slum Prince, man, and uh, yeah, shout out to Kentucky Boy too. That's my manager, Dewan Hobson, yeah. and he's uh, you know, what I'm saying he's helped me a lot too with different you know connections and just that's who i work with you know what i'm saying that's my, that's my manager and you know we're a team and uh he's done a lot of different stuff for me and uh yeah shout out kentucky boy know, for sure. shout out kentucky boy we've came along came a long way so that's cool man yeah. and then of course the one with justin uh ride out y'all dropped this this past summer yeah that one seemed like that did that one did really well too that was a dope ass video too yeah man people really liked that one we shot the video to that at the redneck rave in indiana mm -hmm. and it was just a huge ass show like that, that show was huge and uh yes yeah, so i went up there shot the video for ride out and it charted i yeah. wish i'd have fucking thought about this to bring i have a fucking plaque for it well and, you can uh, and if you yeah. can you can send me a picture of that too yeah, yeah. i got it inside it but uh yeah yeah, well, I got a plaque for it, man. I mean, I mean, people might not normally print uh, plaques for like a. It was like eighty ones, what a charge. Right, it's top one hundred, bro. Yeah, it's still they, something. I was like, but I fucking printed it because this is my first time getting on there. So yeah. I went down to his house and uh, did lives with him before the song release for pre sales and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah, it ended up charting. So shout out to him for you know doing that for me and helping me do that. So. I actually uh, bought, he's got a plaque too. I bought two plaques and sent him one of them. Oh, dope. You know, so yeah, he's got the same plaque I do. Yeah, that's dope, man. Um, but. And the following month, you dropped a single with my, with Chad Arms TV family, with Pelvis Presley. Yep. With Country. Uh, Mobile Home Richin. Yep, shout out to Pelvis Presley, man. Yeah, uh, we got a couple more songs on the, on the album and some music videos coming to them too, so. Yeah, he told me y'all had y'all had Shout done several a, a few things together when the last time I saw him. Yeah, um, we're trying to get a video together right now in Nashville for one called In the Club. It's going to be on the new new album. Yeah, that's dope. I know that he he's busy out there on the road with Old yeah. Jelly, but they're about to be wrapping up once they do Bridgestone. Yeah, that's what we was talking about doing it when uh he got off tour. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. And then ever since then, you've kind of been just been dropping every month, which is the way to go, I think, bro. Every yeah. four weeks, drop a new single with a visual to keep things real. Keep, you know, that's how we've been doing it, too, man. Yeah. It seems like the best formula, really. I had somebody tell me that uh, I needed to drop every two weeks. <laughs> I was like, man, you need to drop. Yeah. It was actually uh, Adam Calhoun. Yep. Somebody you've done an interview with. He told no, me. for sure. We, uh. You know, he knows Kentucky, and he did some shows for him and stuff, and I went and performed at one of his shows, and uh, long story short, man, I actually ended up, so they do things differently, right? Like, they're super professional. Like, I hope yeah. Adam's team's super professional with their, with their sound, and it's like top notch. Well, my ass rented a limo to come to a show I was supposed to perform at and didn't show up till, like, showtime. So they do sound check at noon, you know, and mm -hmm. I... Didn't know that, and I showed up, so I missed the show. They do earpieces and stuff, too. I, at that point, I'd never done earpieces. So, uh, anyways, he ended up, man, let me ride on the tour bus with him to the next city and do a show with him in Indiana. I think it was Indiana. We did yeah. another show in Indiana, and he let me ride on the bus and, you know, help me figure out the earphones, stuff like that, and, you know, set up the sound. But he's one person that told me that you got to drop every two weeks and keep putting it in their face mm -hmm. like no matter what and i notice uh like a spike in numbers if i don't like if i stop dropping music yeah your spotify numbers start going down and stuff so 
I've yeah. been trying to keep up with that, but it's t every t and he's right too. I, I totally get what he's saying. Two weeks is tough, especially when you attach visuals to them. <clears throat> because visual, oh yeah, you know what I'm saying. So and I was doing it. I was doing that for a while. You can see through my YouTube channel. I was doing that for a little while earlier in the year. But uh, really, what slowed me down from doing it right now is I got a big album that I um, got coming. So that's why I haven't been putting as many as much stuff out because mm -hmm. I got the big album coming. So, but that's coming out soon. Um, Do you know what you're calling it? Yep, yeah, I got the cover for it. It's called Mobile Home Rich. That's the name of the album. It's Mobile Home Rich. Yeah. And uh, it's a picture of actually my my necklace and like like a up close shot. You know what I'm saying of of just the Mobile Home Rich necklace. So it's pre it's pretty dope. I can send it to you so you can show it to them and stuff. But yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. it's it's gonna be twenty something songs, man. It's got a lot of people on it, and uh, it's got a lot of good singles on it, a lot of good songs. It's all done by Dub Thirty Thirty. Yeah. Uh, it's like a year of my life I put into it. That's one thing I've put more in this new album than I've ever done into any project. You know, mm -hmm. usually my other projects I get ten songs done and drop it. Yeah. This one I've I've took a long a long time doing. Yeah. But uh, that's cool though, man. Every now and then, it's cool to do like the both either way. But when you can get that project, that's what I just have with my when I dropped in July. It it was a year of work. Yeah, and there, was, and there was seven, eight, ten, twelve songs that didn't get put on the album. Yeah, it was a cutting process, which I'm not. I'm like you before, ten, twelve, fifteen. Let's go ahead and throw it out. You know, yeah. which if you've got ten, twelve, thirty or so, like for sure ones, it's fine to do that. It should, but some stuff you want to kind of take your time with. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so, cut, like you said, cut song. That's one thing I didn't used to do was cut songs. Yeah. Now, to be honest, here lately, I don't know what it is, but here lately, I don't really come up with much that I feel like I need to cut. But mm -hmm. back in the day, there's some stuff I definitely should have, you know, cut. Yeah, there's like a, fil a filtering process that a lot of us never used back then because back then, it was put as many songs on a, on a CD <coughs> or mixtape as you could. Yeah. Quality yeah. wasn't really thought of. Like, it was yeah. just throw it out. <laughs> yeah. It was more quantity because that was before the attention spans went down to 30 to 45 seconds, you know? Yeah. You had five-minute songs, you know, but that's not a, it doesn't exist anymore. But. And everybody always thinks I'm younger, man, but I actually went through the, like, the no internet, no touchscreen cell phone phase, you know. I'm, I was born in 93, so, yeah. you know, I went through the phase of, I used to have to go steal beats off YouTube and yeah. burn them onto a CD and take them back to my trailer and play them on a Sony stereo system to write the song. <laughs> That's yeah. how I used to have to write songs. Yeah, so you, we didn't you have grew a up in phone both eras right? then, yeah. yeah. Even though you're younger than me, you still you grew up at the tail end of that era, to where you experienced that and have been here from day one for the new era that's now. You know? Yeah, for sure. See, yeah. I didn't have internet growing up, and you didn't have phones growing up. You didn't have touchscreens. Like, yeah. you remember the old razor? Yeah, yeah, the, the old yeah. razor flips. Yeah. That's when I was in end of middle school yeah. or during middle school when. Uh, when those were out so that was before all that stuff so yeah different yeah. era for sure no for sure um for tiktok i remember myspace i remember creating myspace pages which your top eights and you put your own music on yeah, there it was crazy you, you like you put your own backgrounds and shit. facebook needs to do that it's wild know. that myspace never that that never translated to these new ones like that i don't know it's crazy that that stuff never really did you could tell, though, they're what gave everybody else the idea. No, they definitely you know. did, bro. They yeah, definitely spawned sure. that. Um, August of this year, you you and Crunchy Black dropped Let My Money Talk. And White Folks does yeah. like the intro on there. Got right? White Folks on the intro. Yeah, shout out to Crunchy Black, man. Shout, yeah, shout out to Crunchy Black. That's my guy. He uh, His birthday, yeah. We shot the video on his birthday. So Was it in <laughs> Memphis? That was crazy. Yeah, we went to Memphis and shot it. Uh, shot it in different places in Memphis. When uh, I like when I go to Memphis, I like to stay at the Pyramid. If you've mm -hmm. ever seen it, the Pyramid in Memphis. I mean, they got a uh, they got a suite. I forget if it's the Governor Suite or whatever it's called. They got this hotel room you get. It's like it's expensive. It's like a thousand dollars for the day. Mm -hmm. But it's like you walk out on the back and see all of Memphis. Yeah. It's just nice. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's where we rented that for the video shoot. You know what I'm saying? I had everybody come up to the hotel. I had a little party up there. And then we left. There's actually a video log out about the behind the scenes. But then we, we left and went and met up uh, with Lil White. 
at the uh, at the bar. So at the bar, that's side where we bar. That's second something. interview with him. Yeah, 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 yeah I've been there. Yeah. When, uh, when, that's the, the bar that we shot some of me and Lil White's video at. Is where when that's that's the same spot, but uh, yeah, but yeah. So man, it was. I don't know how I always end up with members from Three Six on their birthdays. Shot a video with Lil <laughs> yeah. White on his birthday. Shot a video with Crunchy on his birthday, <laughs> and it's an accident. Yeah. It's accidental. So that's cool. Though, yeah, man. man. So that was that was a fun shoot, man. That was a good time. When me and White shot our video, it was a different story because it was the weekend that Young Dolph had passed away. And got you know it was the weekend, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it was, so you could you know it's different. You couldn't just go everywhere, and you just want to go to shoot a video downtown during all that, you know, because everybody was so riled up and, yep, long lived off man. That's a yeah, terrible sure, thing. Man. He's one of my favorite rappers ever. Yeah, seems like we lose a lot of people to uh, situations like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure, man. Um, hardest rapper out my city. You dropped in August of this year. So shortly after. Yeah. Um, I'm real proud of that song, man. That's a good single. I got a video out to it. But, uh, yeah, y'all check out the music video to that for Hardest Rapper Out My City. Um, that's a song everybody's really going to like. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's and we'll put your YouTube link and Instagram and stuff in the description so they can go subscribe to you and check out the music videos and stuff. Yeah. Um, and then recently, well, it's been a couple of months almost, but recently y'all, you and white folks dropped... We grew and developed single. Yeah, man, we just dropped that that single. We grew and developed. Me and white folks. Uh, yeah, there's a whole behind the scenes of the sh of the recording of that, and there's a music video not out yet to that. I'm saving it for the out when the new album comes. But uh, if there's the video part of the video is out where um, it starts off, man. I will say this because that part's already out. But it starts TikTok. out where uh, it's out on YouTube, my YouTube yeah. channel, TikTok. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it starts off with us uh, bringing Larry Hoover Jr. Man, shout out to Larry Hoover Jr. And shout out to his his artist, Cowboy Boss. Man, yeah, shout out to I Kentucky like to, Boy again. Yeah, um, we're we're going to be linking with Cowboy uh, for an interview, too. I talked to, to Larry and, and Kentucky Boy about that, too. Hell, so. yeah. Yeah, so hell Cowboy's yeah. been at a lot of different stuff that I've, I've been at here lately. And we got a, a song in the works and stuff. But... uh. So, yeah, man, shout out to them. But it starts off with us. We brought Larry Hoover Jr. out on stage at the Redneck Rave in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And, uh, man, they just went nuts. So we just introduced him on stage. And that's how that song starts, was showing that. Mm -hmm. And then him walking off, you know what I'm saying? Then the song starts playing. Yeah. And uh, we shot the video there, and we shot it in studio, too. When y'all finally get to see the full video, we just we was waiting for the album. That's what's, that's what's holding you know that's yeah. a that's such a big video the video turned out so good that uh we want to drop it when the album drops so yeah that's and, dope. uh justin justin's in the video and stuff too so y'all see that but do you plan on dropping any more singles before the album or are you going to drop will the album be what drops next no next thing i got coming out is the release date for the album that's I'll what go. i'm working on releasing now just trying to see about uh you know where to release it and stuff but uh yeah that's the next thing coming out man there's a bunch of songs on there and that's i'm excited to release it because you know like i was talking about having to develop my own sound you know over years and kind of mm -hmm. like work on my craft and and get to the level that i'm at like skill wise and rap wise even from my last albums to now you can hear a difference you know what i'm saying no for sure you can definitely tell because i've been uh I was going through the uh, catalog on the way here, and then last night, of course, I've been I'm familiar with several of your songs already. Yeah. But anytime you can get that kind of, you know, if you just keep putting in the work like you're doing, you're going to see that improvement, man, and you're yeah, seeing it sure. in the in the songs that you've been dropping, you know, yeah. which is just a testament to the hard work and stuff that you've been putting in. But yeah, the album though, talking about the new album too, it's I will say some of the people on it from. Uh, yeah, we got uh, we got who the fuck is Justin Times on the album. We got Crunchy's gonna be on the album. White folks will be on the album. Mm -hmm. We got uh, Leroy Biggs on the album. Hell yeah. We got a couple songs with Pelvis Presley, Big Hell Country. Yeah. Shout out to him yeah. on the album. We got uh, my friend uh, Fan Mob DZ on the album. Mm -hmm. Rocky Luciano on the album. Oh, shout out Rocky, that's my guy. Um, yeah, he's on the album. The song me and him got is is hard as fuck, man. It's yeah, it's a real good song. Uh, dog. I just did a couple songs on his last album too for him, but uh, there's other man. They gonna 
somebody's gonna be like, you forgot <laughs> who is, I is was. Is the album finished? Uh, or are you still working on it? Is it finished? No, yeah, it's 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 finished. Like That's there fair. were a couple songs still coming in, but honestly, it ended up uh, being so big that we're gonna have to end up taking songs off of it. I don't. I think it's so big that uh, we're gonna have to clear some from it. You know what I'm saying? Just but uh, maybe for later release or something. Yeah, but uh, yeah, there's. I was hoping I didn't miss them. Oh yeah, shout out to Space Dad. I don't know if you know Space Dad. I got uh two songs with Space Dad on the album as well, and uh, Dirty Prescott Kid. He's on the album, so uh, I think that hits everybody on the new album for sure. So there's a lot of stuff coming for it, man. So it's a year of my life. So Mobile Home Ridge dropping soon. Yep. Album, and, um, yeah, for sure. We'll um we'll put all the links in the description for Marcotic. Y'all to go follow him on Instagram and um, TikTok, and uh, I'm sure you got like a link tree. We can just put your link tree or something in there with all your links. Yeah, and then they can go check out the videos and just stay tuned, man. Y'all heard the songs that's gonna be dropping on that album, man. Some of the features on there are a lot of people that y'all are already fans of on Chat Arms TV. So y'all just be able to get be, get familiar, man, because this is a He's been putting in work, man, and you're starting to, you know, see it paying off, which is good, which is good, man. So. Yeah, that's what's crazy to me to finally be able to, you know. I remember back in the day just, like, you know, sitting, I, you know, I had a normal job working, like, living in my trailer. Mm. And I would, uh, you know, I before I go to show, I used to go practice <laughs> performing yeah. in a mirror, yeah. man. Go practice performing in the mirror in my trailer. And now when we go and to shows, you, you know, with crowds of thousands of people, they know the songs. You know, I appreciate, like, I want to say thank you to everybody who showed support and helped me along the way. You know, I've ho- I hope I've been able to mention everybody and uh, yeah. everybody that supports me. Man, I, I greatly appreciate y'all. Um, but, yeah, man, we're just going to keep working. It's, it's, it's amazing to me to finally get to a point of music being profitable to, yeah, to a living point. Like, yeah, for even sure. if it's not giant like millionaire status blew up huge yet it's you know it's became a living at this point yeah you're not having to go work a job you don't want to work yeah you get to do what you love to do and it pays your bills bro and it doesn't seem like it's work you know yeah for sure and when you're in the middle of doing it you it's not so you sit back and look at it like from that standpoint when you're like i can't believe this is really happening but you're so focused on being in the moment that it doesn't really hit you like yeah, when we talked about sure. the little white stuff or just to talk about the stuff you was just you was just talking about about not ever thinking it'd be something you could do for a living and now you're doing it. Yeah. You know, it's the same And way. then you know, at one point like in my life I'd given up. So to be a to be like to chase it for so long, give up after years and then start back and then finally start making it. And now that it's a full time reality mm-hmm. and a full time job, man, it's just an amazing thing, so you know, I feel like everything happens for a reason and everything's got its time. I honestly feel like if, if I would have picked up this traction, you know, 10 years ago that I wouldn't have been ready for it. You yeah. know what I mean? And I, I just wasn't ready back then. So. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you, man. Yeah. This is a, this is going to be, a, this was a dope interview and uh, y'all be sure to subscribe and tap in on Marcotic and be sure to get that new album when it drops, man. Mobile Home Rich, Chat Arms TV. This thing here, man, it's fucking... Yeah, I ended up with this. This is like a joiner buggy with a Polaris 570 motor on it. It don't run right. We're having to jack the motor up and basically build the whole thing, but... Yeah. A four-wheelers. Got my kids four-wheelers. This is my baby, though. Oh, hell yeah. I got yeah. a couple of different vehicles and shit called Mobile Home Rich. So yeah. I just pretty much everything that I ride with Mobile Home Rich on it, it's called Mobile Home Rich. So this is Mobile Home Rich. The RV we just left, it's named Mobile Home Rich. Yeah. <laughs> we got a truck named Mobile Home Rich and an enclosed trailer named Mobile Home Rich. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, so that's the Razor you was talking about riding around in. Yeah, but you can tell we be riding in it. We're always breaking it. We uh we put the damn lights all on it, light whips on it, stereo in it. It's got a uh <laughs> it's got high clearance, A arms and all that shit. It's just a little 800, but, man, I keep up with all the Can-Ams out in the woods and shit, so. Like, I, you know, all the other people that got them can Am 1000s, Razor Turbos, and all that shit. Yeah. I keep them up with them in this thing, so. 
Yeah. At least in the woods, because no, you know, nobody's going 80 miles an hour in the woods. We're going like 30 or 40 tops usually, you know. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this thing be climbing. It's snorkeled. This is my favorite thing to take out and ride right here. Oh uh, yeah, it's, for sure. I just had it. I just had this thing out at the uh, mobile home bash. Had it out at Blue Holler. It's uh, we threw it at Blue Holler Off Road Park. But yeah, I man, it's like a rocky trail up there. So this thing to go up the rock rock trails to the mud pits, I take it everywhere, man. So that's dope. And you was talking about off camera. You was wanting to bring up too before we. Oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna the... make sure I uh, said everything. You know, I know one person. Different people I wanted to say shout out to. I don't know, if, you know, if I hit everybody out. But man, I got a video coming out with Big Buck Beasy on it when yeah. the album drops. So y'all be on the lookout for that too. Oh, yeah. And uh, I got uh, some mobile home bashes coming next year, so I'm gonna have a mobile home bash at a mud park. I'm gonna try to get different artists on it and stuff like that. So we just had one recently. Uh, we had one in a club in Indiana. So that's something we're gonna continue this year is to throw a mobile home bash, and we're gonna try to you know just build and have you know we're just trying to build every way we can and uh, do our you know do our own thing, man. So yeah. Appreciate you rocking that water merch too, dog. It's real. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. R.P. Whistle. Shout out. And I, uh, I got a few of them from you, actually. Oh, I remember, yeah. I remember, yeah. I remember, yeah. Five of them or yeah. something like that. So, that's terrible, man. Yeah, I used to listen to all his stuff too, man. So. Yeah, R.P. Worm, man. I, uh, yeah. We appreciate you again having us through, man. And uh, y'all be sure to tap in, man. Marcotic. Yeah. Mobile Home Rich. Mobile Home Rich.